You were showing me some cool loop stuff earlier with the colors. Yeah, um, the loop is uh, probably the neatest thing that has been changed. I, I mean, we keep seeing these developments happening, and we're always like, wow. <laughs> yeah. So if we, uh, if we just start playing the track, and we go into our loop panel, and I'm just going to choose a four-beat loop, you can see that it highlights the track. All right. It's color coded. It color codes it, yeah. We've gotten rid of the markers. It's kind of just a faint background to let you know that you're in a loop. Now, <clears throat> we're going to start the track on the next deck. And you'll notice it started on beat. This is part of the uh, smart queuing and beat lock feature. Watch, I'm going to click on the center of the track. And it still stays in beat. I'm going to let the loop go. I'll loop it here. Not a great loop, but you get the idea. And I'm going to click on the left deck, the blue deck. It stays in beat every time. You can right. click anywhere on the track. Doesn't matter where it's going to always going to stay. It's always going to stay. It's going to snap to the. It's going to snap to the beat, or will it actually snap to the count, like the time count, like one, two, three, four? It's it's on a one, two, three, four. Um, it's uh, I noticed that the downbeat isn't perfect every time what it's going to do is it's going to find the closest beat and okay match the it. closest beat so yeah. if you're on the two and you click over it's not going to hit on the on the two that's right okay so just the closest beat it is yeah okay cool so it's it's doing it in split second timing so it's, right. it's making it as close as possible without your audience knowing that something different has happened and it sounds professional excellent so uh, along with these cool features and just the original skin we've also changed the settings menu you can see now that we've got a different layout. It's a, it's a hybrid of the, uh, the simple setup and the advanced setup. So now you can go in, you can change your configurations, you can make multiple configurations for different events or controllers, sure. different audio setups, and you don't have to go back in and reconfigure. You can just go right back down the menu and use your configuration, whatever you name it. I've got config one on here. I've got one that I was playing with with the Instinct. Um, it's really nice to be able to do that because it's a one-time setup and it's easy to be to switch back and forth. Um, the skin screen, which is our interface, I believe you've seen this before in Mesa. Uh, we now have uh, an option to be able to just preview the screens oh, by neat. hovering over them. One neat. of the biggest pains was not knowing which skin was which before, and users with a lot of different skins would be selecting them. They have to wait for the screen to pop up right. or change. So now it's made it so you're, it's basically you get what you're looking at. Right. Um, you can just scroll over them. It picks it up automatically, gives you a preview. Right on. And you can go back into whatever one that you choose. Uh, the controller section uh, uh, still a work in progress. Uh, we're going to have an autofill option, so scripting's not going to be so hard. Um, you're going to be able to script it. Um, it'll autofill, and you'll have your mapping instead of going, "Oh, what's the script for this?" Because the hardest thing is you knew the script, or you made a mistake in a character, you put a period in, or a space, or sure. a dash in the wrong spot, and the script didn't work at all, because uh -huh. the code wasn't right. Now we're going to have a smart feature in there to help you out. Cool. In our options menu, uh, it's changed. We have ba the basic simple options, and then we can click on a show advanced options, and basically it goes through an endless endless right. list. So what we've done is we've put in a search feature. Nice. So now I can type in something like EQ and it gives me everything that's related to EQ. Oh nice. So now that we're in the EQ we can go back to actually the um, audio f the audio engine that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. The frequencies are now completely controllable. Right on. In version 7 you would notice that oh you turn your bass down and all of a sudden it's almost like you had a bass kill. Right. Now you can change your frequencies. So this is going to be, an, uh, obviously, for an advanced user with some audio knowledge. Sure. 
um, but it's nice to be able to do that. You can actually match it with the manufacturer's specs on the controller. So if you had a controller that had an internal mixer on it and it sounded better than the audio engine that we had in version 7, you can now match that. Okay, right on. Uh, everything is pretty much staying here for the login for NetSearch. That hasn't really changed, um, but the broadcasting section has. We're now going to give you the ability to broadcast right from virtualdj.com. You'll basically give them, you'll start broadcasting. The link will go to your profile page on Virtual DJ. You give your friends the link. Wow. There's going to be no more showcast, no more ice cast. Um, things, times to configure it, it's going to be configured automatically. Nice. This will also give you a podcast option where you can broadcast and record at the same time. Oh, neat. So, and that's something that we haven't had before. It was either one or the other, broadcast or record. And people had to figure out workarounds. Uh, in the record section, we we used to have record audio and record video. Now they're integrated as one. You can just choose your codec, what you're using, um, MP4, MP3, OGG. This is still a work in progress as well, but it's going to give the users a lot of ease of access and, and simplify it instead of trying to figure out, oh, what's the codec that I got to use? Video, sure. video recording, it was probably the toughest thing to do because every computer was different. Right. Um, back to the options menu when we were talking about the EQ, um, a lot of our users remember something called the registry tool that was used for tweaking out the registry to work with certain machines. We've now integrated it into the options so there's no additional plugin okay. that they have to download, close the program, test the options, then go back into the program. It's all done on the fly now. You can actually do it in the options menu. Nice. 